name is Dayo Olofade. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a lawyer, I work in technology, I work in product. I think I've done almost every job in media over the last 10 years. Um, and I'm excited to be at Ake Festival. I've had lots of experience working um, to build products that share information with people, right? Consumer technology apps. I think it's very obvious that, you know, I'm a feminist. But what I think is more interesting is trying to figure out the right vocabulary to influence others to claim the term feminist. Um, and I think it takes practice. You know, I had a conversation with someone just last night here at AK where uh, we were discussing the sort of the sexual violence um, and sexual harassment allegations that have seemed to proliferate um, in America, where I was born. Um, and I asked if he had had a conversation with his sons about this. And he responded to me by saying, oh, well, you know, I have a daughter and I encourage her to do, be whoever she can be and do whatever she wants. And I said, that's not what I asked. I asked if you spoke to your son. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, your son is going to be just as involved in the conversation around women's rights and uh, women's freedoms as your daughter. And so you need to equip him with the right vocabulary. And he needs to prepare for situations. Say someone comes to him and says, I'm facing harassment in my work. Or if, for example, um, he sees something going on that maybe shouldn't be going on, or hears men discussing women in a way that's derogatory. Um, and so I think the conversation around feminism is having a very important moment of um, there's kind of a public airing of this conversation around harassment in particular that only spotlights the need to bring men in as allies in the discussion. And, um, and it can't be done passively. Um, you know, you never know what you're going to say in the moment, and so preparing yourself in advance is, is essential. I was very delighted to have the opportunity to speak with one of my very close friends, Alexis Okeo. For some years, when both of us were kind of working in magazines and um, in early in our careers as young Yoruba women um, who were from the diaspora, people sometimes confused us, which is actually how we ended up meeting. Um, and she has written an extraordinary book that um, I encourage anyone to go out by and read. It is so thoughtful. She's such a gifted reporter. Um, we forget sometimes, you know, that she went to all these different places and has written these amazing stories. But even the act of going to do that work um, is difficult and shouldn't be taken for granted. Um, so one thing I really loved um, is that both of us are non-fiction writers and I think there's so much energy and excitement around fiction in Nigeria, in Africa, in the world and at Ake uh, and as someone who was a literature major in college I'm here for it but journalism is so important and it is so important in Africa where you have um, all manner of institutions public, private, family that need to be held accountable and we need to hear stories that are done with the discipline and the rigor of journalism. Um, and I was just excited to be able to speak as nonfiction writers. Um, so our session touched on that. It touched on um, the role of each of us as someone who's grown up in the States but lived and spent time and working in Africa. It touched on um, the challenges that we face when you have governments that do not support people, when people truly feel like they're on their own. One of the key themes in the bright continent is um, that the absence of government structure has created space for innovation. Instead of waiting for electricity, people are doing solar. 75% um, of healthcare in this continent is still paid for out of pocket by people. Um, and any number of other innovations that actually go around poor public service positions. So we spent a lot of time talking about that and why it is that African states have performed so poorly and have such a legitimacy crisis. Um, and obviously Lamide Akintobi, she's brilliant and a talented journalist. I thought she did a wonderful job as moderator and I thought um, in general the conversation was one about, um, you know, I say often and hear often that you can't be what you can't see. And so a lot of what we try to do, both Alexis and I, is profile individuals who are doing something that is hard but that is important. And for people to see success, um, quietly as in Alexis's stories, and sometimes with very big business successes and some of the entrepreneurs I profile. To be able to see that success um, is incredibly empowering. Um, it's not something that needs to be, you know, about Steve Jobs. It's that here in Nigeria we have people who are working in technology, who are working in business, um, who have managed to do more with less. My favorite color is chartreuse. And chartreuse is uh, the exact blend of green and yellow. 
Um, I'm obviously wearing pink today, but I think the, uh, the color is relevant, I suppose, in that uh, it's a hybrid. And I try in both my career and my personal life to sort of sit astride a number of different disciplines and geographies. Um, so I am a lawyer and I'm a writer and I am a product manager and I'm a friend and a sister and all of those things. And I'm also very Nigerian and also very American. So I suppose in that sense, chartreuse is a good color because not only is it bright and loud, uh, but it is also uh, sits between two things.